do you working now? Il <laughs> n'y a pas de son. OK, Luciana, can I... bonjour. Bonjour, Richab. Uh, can, you, can you hear? Hi. Hi. Uh, guys, yes, now, gone. OK, thank you. Well, thank God for my team. They are quite amazing. Bonjour, tout le monde. Uh, bonjour. Alors, attendez, je mets mes lunettes parce que je ne vois pas bien. Bonjour, Lily. Bonjour, Lisa. It's working. Bonjour, Brownie. Bonjour, Baroness. Bonjour à tous. Uh, Chris, bonjour. If you see these uh, people with a, a green highlight, that means they are members of my YouTube channel, not subscribers, members, which means that they access my exclusive content as well. Bonjour Chris, euh, moi et moi-même, bonjour Diana, bonjour euh, Antigone, bonjour. Um, and I needed to shout out Tanisha, so here we go Tanisha, bonjour. Uh, uh, bonjour Habib, very nice uh, to see you, bonjour. Uh, Uh, bonjour, hi Alexa, so great to see you. Uh, I have been following you since you were at 100,000 followers. Wow, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I love you guys. Uh, you have been following me for a while then, because as you know, we are way past 100,000 followers. Bonjour, Seraman. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour, Mustafa. Bonjour, Christina. Okay, so today it's, it's you know, I haven't done the live like that for a very, very long time, um, but I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you to answer any questions I know that you guys have uh, given me some questions which I will attempt to answer as many as possible um, please say hi to my kids Gabriella and Daniela Simon uh, I'm going to say bonjour to Daniela et Gabriella uh, lots of love from me uh, <laughs> bonjour à tout le monde um, I bought your course and learned enough to communicate when I went to France Harry true Man, thank you so much and please leave us a review on trust pilot if you can we need as many reviews as possible because the course is awesome and i'm so glad that you uh you learned out of uh, our course as well so i know we have a lot of questions Uh, that we were sent uh, yesterday and we are being sent now. Uh, now, Black, can you help me with La Negation? I will try to help you with La Negation, but there is lots uh, for me to answer. Uh, do you like cats? Yes, kitty cat brawl. I love cats. J'adore. Moi, j'ai un chat. I do have a cat too. Uh, okay. I want to start with one piece of grammar that uh, um, uh, I've been asked uh, many times uh, so much that we created a ebook which is free for you to use. Okay, I know that Liam, uh, who's answering the comments, um, will give you the link. There is a link on my free ebook. But I'm going to show you, uh, before I answer any questions, really rapidly the reason why it is so important to understand past participles in irregular verbs okay so here is my screen and here is my uh, lesson on irregular verbs now the uh, ebook has 50 irregular verbs it explains to you how to use my uh, special ebook for free okay now this is quite simple now listen carefully and then i will answer some of your questions what i would like you to understand is the importance of understanding uh, how to use a past participle in irregular verbs now what is an irregular verbs very quickly these are verbs that are not following a pattern per se. So we've got three different groups of verbs in French. We've got the ER and the IR groups. And these groups in the infinitive forms means that they are regular verbs. They are going to follow a pattern in ER verb, follow a pattern in IR verb. When I mean following a pattern, that means that they will always have the same ending and they will always be used the same way regardless of the stem of that verb. However, the third group verb is really highly irregular. So I'm going to show you a list here. If you look at the left hand side of my uh, column here, we've got irregular verbs. Okay. And why are they irregular verbs? Because some of them ends in RE, some of them ends in OIR, RE, OIR, R-E, R-E, 
or a R, i.e. for example, okay? So what happens is that and, aller, er. Aller, to go, is the only verb that ends with er that is highly irregular. The rest er of er verbs will always follow the same pattern. Now, I've used these verbs in my ebook, free ebook. There is, uh, there are 50 that we have chosen for you that are regularly used, okay? But I've used this verb to show you that they look really different when conjugated with their past participle. The past participle is extremely important when conjugating the passé composé. So, let me explain. The passé composé is a past tense. It's the tense that we use to express a verb in the past, as in an action that took place and is gone and done over with, okay? Why is it so important? Because it's going to be the first tense that you're going to have, which is composed of a subject pronoun, for example, je, of an auxiliary verb. It could either be avoir or être, and it's very relevant to know that, okay? And a past participle. Very important for you to learn this by heart, okay? And it will help you hugely into, you know, uh, making less mistakes, for example, and being more precise. The more precise you are when conversing or when writing French, the more you will be understood, okay? And then the more communication will happen, and then the more you will practice your speaking, etc., etc., okay? Uh, aller is not a verb. It's not an ER verb. So, yes and no. Aller is the only exception into the ER verb that is not conjugated the same way as other ER verb, okay? And I'm going to show you how in a minute. So, the passé composé comes with two... Oh, could you pull the blackboard? What? Could you pull the blackboard up it? Oh, yes, okay, I will, don't worry. I don't, <laughs> sorry. Okay, ah, here we go. Now, the passé composé, Okay, as I said, is used with an auxiliary verb. Now, in order to use the auxiliary verb, don't use the auxiliary verb in its infinitive form. So what is an infinitive form? It's, for example, avoir, it's to have, okay? So this is the infinitive form, to have, okay? That means I have not conjugated the verb yet, but you must conjugate it, avoir, in its present tense, in order to conjugate a passé composé. Okay, I know it sounds crazy. Avoir, in its conjugated form, becomes j'ai, I have. Okay, so suddenly I have conjugated that verb, okay, avoir. And you must absolutely learn avoir and être in the present tense if you want to conjugate in the past tense. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> Can you explain? Okay, okay, I'm, I'm not going to read. I'm, I'm reading, but ah, mustn't read. Okay, so j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, on a, and look, they are conjugated. Nous avons, we have, vous avez, and you know what I'm doing here. Ils ont and elles ont. I am conjugating the verb avoir in the present tense. Why is it so relevant to the passé composé? It's because you need this and then you need to add the past participle of the verb you want. Okay, so let's rewind for a minute. Why is it so important to understand the past participle in irregular verbs? Because they look crazy. They do not look the same as the uh, as uh, their infinitive form. Okay, Joy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm giving you an example, and we are going to do the rest together as quickly as we can. Boire means to drink. Okay, so I'm going to write to drink. Okay, here we've got the verb in its infinitive form. Here with the auxiliary avoir in the passé composé. And his past participle is bu. I know, right? So if you wanted to say, I drunk, you would say, j'ai 
bu. Can you say that? J'ai bu. Okay? So, this is what I mean when highly irregular uh, verbs. You look at the infinitive boire, but the past participle doesn't look anything like its infinitive. Look at that. Look at that. Okay? And I would like you to learn them by heart. And this is why we have created this awesome ebook for you. It's free, by the way. Access it for free. And I think um, it's free. You will have the written version. If you want the audio and the quizzes that come with it, you must be uh, uh, a member of my website. That's the only uh, difference. So, but it's free, okay? I drank and drank both bu in the passé composé. I drank, I drank. No. So, uh, Liam, quick question. I have drunk, D-R-U-N-K, yeah? Uh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, drunk is the past participle, but drank is the imparfait. Okay. So, I drank mean, uh, oh no, it is the same. J'ai bu. You can translate it the same way. While I was drinking is je buvais. Then it's imperfect. Aha. I see. Very good question, by the way. So, let's have a look at Ali. Let's have a look at Ali. Ali means to go, okay? What auxiliary verb is it used with in a passé composé? Avoir or être, and être being to be, okay? Now, bear in mind that all movement verbs are used with the auxiliary verb to be in the passé composé. So, what, what, uh, what, uh, auxiliary verb is aller used with? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm asking you. Alors, uh, moi et moi-même, je suis allé. Très bien. So, it is être for aller. I'm Ruta. Absolutely. Être. Okay. It's être. And what is its past participle? Now, this one is aller. Okay. Which means that when you are going to conjugate it in the passé composé, you must use et because aller is a movement verb. And it's going to be je suis allé. Okay. Either double E if you refer to a woman or just one E if it's masculine. Okay. So Gary, absolutely, it's être. Okay. Pass participle, aller. Let's have a look at attendre. Attendre now. Now, attend. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Okay, so it's être and aller. Now, let's have a look, look à attendre. Now, attendre means to wait. Okay, to wait. Okay, it doesn't mean to attend. It means to wait. Which auxiliary is used with attendre in the passé composé? Être ou avoir and what is its past participle? Now, here you go. That's the question I'm asking. What is the past participle of attendre? And what auxiliary is it used with? Okay. Avoir. Absolutely. It is not a movement verb. So, it's to have. Okay. And it's amruta, attendu. And Ali is right. C'est j'ai attendu. Attendu. Très bien. J'ai attendu. Attendu. So if you conjugate avoir attendu, absolutely. Uh, not j'attendu, uh, Tina, not j'attendu, you must have an auxiliary no matter what, okay? So it's not j'attendu, it's j'ai attendu. So look at uh, other answers from the chat. J'ai attendu. Can you see that? Well done, Fieni. Okay. Fieni. Okay. Now, here's a question. Avoir. Avoir is a verb as well. It's also an auxiliary. Avoir means to have. We do conjugate it in a passé composé as well. So, we need to use an auxiliary for the verb avoir, weirdly. What auxiliary do we use? And uh, what... <laughs> what... Sorry, I've just read the... Alexa, you look so old. <laughs> you look old. <laughs> just, wow. <laughs> okay, so... Avoir, what auxiliary do we use for avoir and what is the past participle? Now, moi et moi-même, obviously, uh, you know what you're uh, doing. Well done, you. It is indeed avoir. So, we use avoir with avoir, okay, in the passé composé, and it is eu. Well done. So, j'ai eu. 
Très bien. Crazy, isn't it? So if you look at that, how different is this to its infinity form? It is crazy, okay? Crazy, okay? So, j'ai eu would be the beginning of your passé composé. Nous avons eu, vous avez eu, etc., etc. Okay, remember, you must know avoir in a present tense in order to use the passé composé. Now, well done, you guys. You're doing really well. So, avoir is to have. Now, let's have a look at comprendre. Comprendre. Comprendre means to understand. Okay, to understand. There we go. To understand. If we use comprendre with the auxiliary, what auxiliary is that and what it is, it's past participle. Uh, Ranvir, bravo, it is avoir compris. Jeuned, bravo, you get that. Okay, we are getting going now. It is definitely avoir as the auxiliary and compris is its past participle. And again, well done, Jeuned, bravo. You can see that compris is different from the infinity form comprendre. Okay. Alexandre, you look sexier now with your salt and pepper hair. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, there is a whole debate here in the office whether I should dye my hair or not. And Liam says, no, nobody touches my Alex's hair. And uh, I might just go along with what Leah decides. Uh, <laughs> no. See, there you go. He's just said no. <laughs> It's so funny. Uh, but thank you. Uh, it's, it's really lovely. Um, okay. So, avoir compris. So, it becomes j'ai compris. Now, let's have a look at the next one. I understood. So, j'ai compris. The translation of, our, I, you know, j'ai compris. I understood or I have understood. Okay. So, what is croire? Now, croire is to believe. Okay, to believe. Okay, to believe. Here we go. So that's to believe. What is the auxiliary that we use? And Amruta is on fire today. It is, you're right, it is cru and it is used with avoir. Madame, you helped me in class ninth love from India. One bisou bisou. Oh, Advit, say hello to all your classmates for me. Bisou bisou to all of you. So, croire, cru, uh, avoir. And cru, okay? So, cru. And Alvit Nina, again, do not use cru. You have to have an auxiliary. So, j'ai cru. J'ai cru. Uh, okay, uh, we love you as you are, Alexa. <laughs> I see that there is some comment that is, no, wait, she's not old. Uh, j'ai cru. Um, uh, so, that's perfect. Now, Let's have a look at devoir. Devoir. And again, we are doing the same. Devoir is to have to, must, to have to. So how would you say I had to? Okay. What auxiliary verb do you need? And what is the past participle? And Maichi, it's avoir and absolutely do. Okay. Now look how crazy that is. Look how do does not look anything like it's uh, uh, infinitive form, okay? So, du, okay? Devoir, avoir du, so, j'ai du, tu as du, il a du, etc. Okay, well done, you guys, okay? I get confused between devoir and devenir. Well, devoir is to have to and devenir is to become. They're two different verbs. So, don't get confused by, uh, by that, okay? Now, être. Être is an interesting thing here. Okay, now look at être. Être is to be. I'm going to être is to be. Now, though it is an auxiliary form, when we conjugate it in the passé composé, we need to have an auxiliary with it. Okay, so take être as its face value without thinking it's an auxiliary verb. What auxiliary verb do you use with être? Uh, what auxiliary? It's avoir été moi et moi-même. Very good. So it is indeed, and I put myself here, you use avoir and the past participle is été. Now look how very different that is from its infinity form. Avoir and then 
été. OK, so well done, you guys. You're doing really well. Avoir, été. So conjugate, I have been. It's j'ai été. J'ai été. OK. Um, uh, Jay, one of the things I love about French people is that they, it's, they don't care what other people think of them. And I have a great sense of humor about life. There you go. You have described me, Jane. I love you, Jay. I love you very much. Okay, here we go. Lire. Lire is to read. So you can see the next one. Lire, recevoir, and venir. Now, lire is to read. Now, this is to be, by the way. I'm going to, to be. And lire is to read. Now, lire, what is the auxiliary? And what is its past participle? Nehal, uh... <laughs> Osman, I'm not quite sure. Parfois, mon pied glisse et ça fait mal. OK. Uh, J'ai lu, absolument. So that means it's with avoir. And the past participle is lu. OK. This is crazy. Avoir lu. OK. J'ai lu. And look how very different this past participle is to lire. And that's the reason why I want to emphasize on the fact that you should learn the past participle of certain irregular verbs. I mean, I'm not asking you to learn them all, it's impossible, but I'm asking you to learn the main ones. That's why we have created this ebook sheet, you know, for you to download for free, because I'm giving you 50 of the main uh, verbs uh, that I would like you to learn. Okay, here we go. Uh, Liam has given us the list, okay? Uh, Rishab, one of the best French language teachers. Oh, thank you. Okay. Recevoir is to receive, to receive, to receive. Did I spell that right? No, I didn't. Sorry, I never know um, rec receive. Like that? Receive? I don't know. Liam? E-I, receive or I-E? Uh, yeah, it's uh, received. Okay. So, I received. Okay, please, where is the e-book? Mokili is asking where the ebook is. Into the top. Into the top. Into the top. The ebook is into the top. Okay. So, yes, well done, Safia. Avoir is definitely the auxiliary used in the passé composé with recevoir. And reçu is the uh, past participle. I know, right? Uh, yes, yeah, Safia, thank you. I can't spell. <laughs> I just can't spell. There's too many things happening here. I don't know if you know, but I have one, two, three, four screens in front of me. So it's uh, I've got to, to deal with a lot of things at the same time here. And um, I can't multitask. <laughs> anyway, uh, avoir reçu is exactly that. Now, the last one is venir. Now, let's have a look at venir. Now, venir is an interesting one. So, venir is to come, okay? So, venir, uh, to go and to come. Uh, two different verbs, aller et venir, okay? Um, well, the, the, I don't know, what's the difference between aller and venir? Aller is to go and venir is to come. So, you wouldn't use them in the same uh, way. Now, waiting for Jesus, receive has an E in it, by the way, <laughs> okay? The auxiliary est être. To be, okay, and the past participle is venu, which means that when you are going to conjugate this verb in the passé composé, you must use être. So être in its present tense, je suis, plus past participle, je suis venu. Quite simple, okay, you wouldn't say j'ai venu, you would say je suis venu. Chris, well done, okay, je suis venu. Uh, uh, to go, aller et venir. Ah bah oui. <laughs> Safia, Safia, do you want to take over my... <laughs> You're right. Safia is right. To go and to come are opposite. So it's to go and to come. Revenir is to come back. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, someone was asking my age. I can't tell you because I've passed the age where I cannot tell you my age anymore. Put it this way. I am double the age of Liam, I think. <laughs> Or oh, most of my team. <laughs> Our French school team is here. Vasa is here. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> la meilleure prof du monde. Oh, non, ça va, Vincent, ça va. And uh, félicitations, en fait. Je dis ça comme ça. Uh, OK, so um, we have done that now. Uh, Liam, do we have a question from the audience today uh, that I can answer? Basically, if you want more about this, you can go and get my free whatever. Tu as 30 ans, oui, Janet. I am 30. It's a known fact. Everybody knows that on the net. Um, how do I get to that? Okay, so what is the first question uh, that uh, we can answer? Uh, Liam, if you've got some. Uh, can you do a live session for people who would like to study French? I mean, a live session which includes all the basics. Right. Um, Swapna, after this live, I have an exclusive live. And this is when I teach really specific topic. So here we go. That's me. Ta -da! At 12.30, I will be live and I'm doing a reading comprehension exercise at B1 level at 12.30. And you can only access it if you are either a member of the YouTube channel, the green people that you see, or a member of my website. Okay, like Antigone. Antigone is, uh, can watch, for example, my uh, exclusive live. And these are proper lessons, if that makes sense. Uh, so uh, we are going to, uh, can you please explain? So I can do, I can do a complicated uh, um, uh, topic now, I'm afraid. So here we go. I'm back to small. What is the first question, Liam? I I, I, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Okay, Liam, uh, his mouse is gone. Liam, have you lost your mouse? Uh, ah! You just have to answer a, a recent question. Re uh, yes, I can't see the top. I can't see the top ones. What a shame. Oh, oh what a shame. Okay. Um, someone was asking me earlier on, and I uh, had uh, Caroline, um, my very dear, good writer, uh, an expert in grammar, asking whether espéré que is followed by subjunctive. If you're still here and you're still watching, the answer is no. And though I know that it expresses the doubt, it is not used with a subjunctive after and you use an indicative. However, ah, you've got it. Okay, salut. I wanted to know if a subordinate clause after j'espère que is a subjunctive clause or indicative because j'espère que sounds like uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Bunny, absolutely not. <laughs> it's not. So you do not use uh, the uh, subjunctive after j'espère que, though it has que. It is followed for this verb by a indicative, which means a présent de l'indicatif, a future. J'espère que tu viendras. I hope you will come, for example. But if you put it into its negation, it becomes a subjunctive. And this is the very uh, difference between, you know, some of the verbs is that sometimes a verb will be followed by a subjunctive if it is put in its neg negative form. I cover all of that on my course in lesson 30 and lesson 31. Okay, so follow, follow, follow for more. <laughs> okay, uh, so ex quel, quelques verbes usuels, être, avoir, faire, s'appeler, please explain. Safia, I don't know what you want me to explain, so be more precise. Um, uh, okay, the verbs that are followed by a and de, there is a, a YouTube video coming up just on that. So watch that space because I think it's been written, Liam, isn't it? So that uh, video has been written and I will, uh, uh, I will record it. Um, I'm a student, so can you do it on weekends or weekdays after 5 p.m.? <laughs> sure. I've got nothing else to do, but um, you can watch this video, you know, later if you want. Okay, so Lisa, question. I am just starting lesson three. When I go to the verb section, where is the place, the best place to start as, uh, as that you recommend? Now, if you have the website, you will see that there is millions of quizzes and support guides, hundreds of lessons, etc., etc. 
if you're in the module one, which is A1 level, okay, in lesson three, but if you go to the verb, stick to the verb that is in the present tense. So you can have a look at them. Don't look at the other tenses. Look at the present tense. Then when you've reached all the, the through the module, when you've reached all the tenses, then go back, go back to these verbs, okay, and learn them in the different tenses that you've learned during the lesson. So, but please, please, if you are going to look at all the verbs that we have put forward on the website, please use them in the present tense only, especially if you're only in module one. Okay, so another question, uh, I'm wondering what's the best way to learn vocab and also how did you learn English, Alexa? That's a very, uh, how did I learn English? But well, you know, the best way to learn English for me was to come into uh, England and work. I had no choice. I was a waitress for a while and that was the best way for me to learn. I arrived knowing no English whatsoever. When it comes to vocabulary, I would definitely start a list of vocabulary. Vocabulary is not everything, okay? It is extremely useful, but you learn your vocabulary, you must be able to put it in context. So I would definitely use it in a context and in a small sentence. For example, you have le téléphone, okay, le téléphone, par exemple, then you must, uh, you know, use it with, um, in the context. So, par exemple, je tiens le téléphone dans la main. So I'm holding the phone in my hand or something like that. Uh, par exemple, les lunettes, les lunettes, then put it in the context, I wear glasses, je porte des lunettes, okay? So use that and uh, do you know what? Put post-its all over your house with, the, uh, with the, the words in it, you know? It, it will help you, put post-its in it. And by the way, someone asked me, well, how do you know when a word is feminine or masculine? Um, it's quite simple. When you are going to learn your vocabulary, make sure that you learn your vocabulary with the article in front. So I'm going to put myself small again here and le, oh. la, you know, as you know, means the, but unfortunately we have les as well, as you know, all of these mean the. Okay, and uh, the main question is, well, when do you know one rather than the other? Uh, well, les is quite simple. You will use les regardless of its gender for a plural. Okay, for example, you could say pomme. Okay, pomme is an apple. It's la pomme. So suddenly we know it's a feminine, but when it is put it is in its plural, it will become les. And all you need to do is add an S at the end of the word, okay? So knowing when to use la rather than le, it's quite simple. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, I'm going to use pink. I know it might, you know, uh, upset some people. Yes, but pink is... Uh, anyway, um, E. Most of the words that end with an E in French are feminine. Doesn't work all the time. I'm sure people are going to say, well, that's not true. Well, I'm telling you, that's a quick fix. Okay, so if that works, okay. So if it ends with an E, 75% of the time, the chance is that that word is feminine, la. Okay, and another, par exemple, pff, attends, uh, je vais regarder, bouton, random, very random. Uh, bouton is a button, okay, or a spot, okay. Now, bouton is le Okay, it ends, and I'm going to use blue with an N. Okay, so it is masculine. I have a video on that, by the way. I explain everything, all the endings uh, that are most likely to be feminine or masculine. I love pink. If Alexa Mans uses it, oh, thank you. I use it because pink is girl and blue is boy, but I know nowadays, you know, uh, everything is fluid. So I'm I'm using it to be visual here, okay. How can I we, can we differentiate future proche to future simple? Uh, Vishnesh, that's a very good question, which I am going to answer now. So future proche is quite simple. What I would like you to know is a future, by the way, we have this amazing video that is doing so well on uh, YouTube at the moment where I have drawn um, 
a uh, timeline, you know. So you have the present. If you go back, you have the past, okay? So le passé, okay? Within the passé, you will have different types of tenses. Uh, passé composé, you've got uh, imparfait, you've got uh, plus que parfait, etc., etc. If you go forward, uh, you know, forward, then you will have the future. So you've got your future, okay? But you would have here your future proche, okay? So what is the difference between the two? Okay, the future proche is not conjugated the same way as the future. Let me explain, okay? Now, the future proche has one element, which is a semi-auxiliary, which is the verb aller, to go. We've just learned that it's a highly irregular verb, okay, to go. Now, the way we do that is quite simple. You conjugate to go in the present tense. Je vais, I go. And then you add an infinitive verb, okay? So that's a future proche. It's, it's proche, it's a near future. It's a future that is going to happen like soon, okay, soon, okay? Well, the future is more of a further away future, if that makes sense. So here we go, je vais manger is I'm going to eat, okay? I'm going to eat, okay? So then you think, okay, but what if I want to use the proper future for the verb manger, okay? Here we've used a quick fix, je vais manger. You can learn aller in the present tense and then you will have a quick fix to talking in the future tense, even if you don't talk in the proper future. So, je vais manger, tu vas manger, il va manger, nous allons manger, vous allez manger, ils vont manger, etc., etc., etc. You must learn manger, learn manger in the present tense, okay? Then, you think, well, okay, so we've got this. How can you differentiate? The differentiation is quite simple here. If you wanted to use manger not in the future proche, you would use manger like that. Je mangerai. Okay. So what makes the difference between the two? Is one is closer to the present than the other one. Je mangerai is I will eat. And we formed it just by putting this ending at the end. Okay. So je mangerai. Okay. Je mangerai. Okay, so, je vais manger, I'm going to eat. Okay, mais je mangerai, I will eat. And again, that's another lesson. How to conjugate a verb in the future, that's another lesson completely. I have covered it so many times on YouTube, but also it's uh, explained in depth in my course. Okay, uh, right. And by the way, someone said to me, but how can you tell the difference between the conditional and uh, the in terms of pronunciation, have a look at this. Have a look at this and this. Two different tenses, weirdly. One says I will eat and one says I would eat. Okay? Bizarre, isn't it? The only difference is the S at the end. Okay? How do you pronounce that? Someone said, but how do you, can you tell the difference? How do you pronounce that? Same pronunciation. Je mangerai, je mangerai. So you may say, but how do you know when to use the conditional or how do you know when you're using a future? You don't unless you put this verb into context. Okay, for example, je mangerai demain au restaurant. Okay, I will eat tomorrow at the restaurant. Or, Je mangerai demain au restaurant si tu venais avec moi. So here I've put a condition. I would eat, so this is the one we are using, tomorrow at the restaurant if you come with me. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, that was not a question, but have we got time for another one? Don't forget to get our free ebook pinned in the comments or just below this comment. Uh, yeah, but... You've just put <laughs> you've just put the twelve thirty Alexa live. Okay, and and the Alexa live. So I'm not sure what that means, Liam. What are you doing? Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> I think Liam wants to go and eat. That's what happened. I could I could go on for hours. No, we've got the next one. 
<gasps> yes, in 15 minutes. Yes. OK. Ah Alexa, je ne peux pas télécharger la liste des mots irréguliers. Je me suis connecté à votre site, site officiel. Um, OK. Contact us. Hein? Contact us. Contact us. Please contact us at support at Learn French with Alexa. Now, I am going to read all your questions. I haven't answered everything, but I hope you enjoyed it. I have to go because in 15 minutes, I am live again. Uh, and remember, this live is about reading comprehension. It's a proper exercise. It's really cool. And this is open to my members on YouTube and my clients at uh, the website on the website. I can't answer anymore. I want to answer, but but uh, Liam says no. Liam said, no, you're not answering anymore. Oh, I love the hearts. Love the hearts. If you have any questions, support at Learn French with Alexa. Uh, merci, Ercav. Merci, Adjé. Uh, how old is your sons and daughters, uh, Adjé? Well, I've got a 16 and a 19 year old. Uh, there you go. Uh, Simfai, the live? Yes, the live. And the link is on my website and on the community as well okay the community tab if you are a member you will see there is an exclusive tab so please join please join please join joshua hope to see you soon in the next live which takes place in 15 minutes david king okay see you in a few minutes my she in a few minutes uh we'll see you in the live yes your cha uh, india are interested in French because Pondicherry is a French community. Okay. And do they speak French? Merci, Lisa. Hope to see you in 15 minutes. Elaine and Neil Hutchinson. For sure. Bisous, bisous. Au revoir. À bientôt. Salut. Bye-bye.